Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix your PS5 if it's overheating as demonstrated here. So if your PS5 is getting the PS5 is too hot error message and then it just shuts off, the problem is most likely caused by overheating which can be caused by various different factors from dust buildup in the heatsink or the power supply to possibly a defective fan. And in most cases, it's caused by spillage or oxidization of the liquid metal on the APU chip. So I'm going to be showing you guys all three stages with varying different degrees of difficulty on how to fix this issue on your PlayStation 5. So before we start, please go ahead and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. The PS5 we're going to be working on today is a disc edition launch system. But if you have a newer 1100 or 1200 series PS5 or even a PS5 Slim, the principles still apply. You can check your console's model number here and the serial number is going to be on the right side here. Now to get on with the disassembly process. We're going to take these covers off by giving them a whack like this same on the other side always hitting from the top the case is held on by these clips now we'll have to remove some screws including removing this warranty sticker which will void your warranty more on that later we're going to use the metal pry tool from the fast tech pro toolkit to remove this big sticker here that hides some connectors underneath Now we have to remove these connectors. The one on the left is for the fan. Make sure you pull on the white part and not the off-white part. The off-white part is part of the motherboard and you do not want to pull that out. A technique I like to use is grabbing all the cables at the same time and pulling them. That's much safer than just trying to grab the connector like this. Now we're going to pull out this grate, which is a plastic piece of trim, which is held in by clips. Now we're going to use our FastTech Pro Auto Kit, and we're going to hook up a T9H bit, which is included, of course. Check the links in the description box and pinned comment if you're interested. We're going to hook up a T9H bit to our FastTech Pro Auto Kit, and we're going to remove these screws. These hold in the fan. They're different lengths and sizes, but do not worry. I am going to be reassembling this console later on to show you where each one goes. I'd also like to remind people that these videos take a lot of time and effort to produce, so please be sure to check out FastTechStore.com if you need any PS5 parts or repair services. Also a like and a subscribe goes a long way and it costs you nothing. Now we're going to pull up on this piece and it should just come out and now we should be able to lift out the fan. Now, if your PS5 is overheating, you want to check this fan to make sure that it spins. And it should spin freely as demonstrated here. This is a Delta model fan and can be purchased at FastTechStore.com if yours is broken. But before ordering a new fan, make sure that it's not dirty because a dirty fan will often get seized. So if it is dirty, clean it out using a brush also included in our FastTech Pro toolkit. But since this fan is spinning freely, and is not dirty so therefore it's not the issue we'd want to look inside this heatsink here lots of times dust gets built up in this heatsink and when that happens your system does not have airflow and then the system's going to overheat so use a brush like the one in our fast tech pro toolkit and knock out any dust that's stuck in that heatsink you'd also want to try to clean out the power supply from here which is known to catch dust but it's not visible from this camera angle this is what the power supply looks like and this is the angle that you'll be seeing. You can use a brush to clean it out or use a compressed air can, but to give it a full clean, you will need to take it out of the system which requires removing the motherboard. Here's a different angle, a better look at the heatsink. You're gonna be sticking your brush or compressed air can in there to get any dust or debris out of the heatsink and the power supply. This should fix your problem if it was caused by an obstructed cooling system. The heatsink, especially on the first gen PlayStation 5, is huge. And if any part of it is obstructed, you're gonna have problems. That was the easy part. Now, if your problem's still not fixed, you need to get to the motherboard, which requires you to remove this warranty sticker. If you don't wanna void your warranty, if you have any left, you can heat up this sticker with a heat gun or a hair dryer, 
and then peel it off without doing it any damage. Heating up the sticker allows us to remove it without separating the two layers. As you can see here, I got the sticker off without much damage. There's a little small spot up here that I'm going to cover with a Sharpie and pretend that I did a perfect job. You can use some sticker paper to preserve this warranty sticker. This can be applied later to the console. Now we need to remove some more screws using our Fastec Pro Auto Kit, which is going to save us a lot of time because this thing has a ton of screws. The PS5 is a disassembler's nightmare. A lot of these screws are different lengths and sizes. Some of these are meant for plastic, some of these go in metal. But do not worry, I will be showing you where each one of these goes when I'm assembling this thing later in the video. As you can see, there's screws that look the same but are not the same. This one here in the corner is a long one. This one in the corner here is also a long screw just like the one up top. This is a small silver screw right here. We'll find more of these on the main board. Thank God for the Fastec Pro Auto Kit and the fact that I'm a genius for coming up with this product. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description box and the pinned comment if you want this screwdriver. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. This toolkit not only disassembles your PS5, but all other kinds of electronic devices and comes with a lifetime warranty. We're gonna switch to a Phillips bit to remove this Phillips screw. And this door is the cover for an SSD if you've installed one. Then we're gonna also remove this Phillips screw here. And it's got a washer on it, make sure you don't lose that. Now we're gonna pull up this part of the case and at this point it should just come off. Now we should have better access to the heat sink and the power supply. Use a compressed air can to blow it out and you can also clean out this heat sink up top here. Now if your problem's still not fixed by cleaning this out then we need to get to the motherboard. So let's get the disk drive out of the way by pushing down on this clip and pulling on this cable. We're going to do the same thing on this side here. Push this clip as demonstrated here and pull the cable. Now the disk drive's free and we can just lift it out. This is what a PS5 disk drive looks like. Available at fasttechstore.com. Now let's hook up a T9H to our Fasttech Pro Auto Kit. And there's about 43 screws, most of them unnecessary and right next to one another. Thank God, once again, for the Fasttech Pro Auto Kit. We need to remove these antenna cables and we can do so simply by lifting them up. Now let's carefully remove this tape so we can get these antenna wires out of the way. Now let's pull out this ribbon cable here and this ribbon cable here. Now let's remove the 43 or so screws 42 silver and one long black T9 screw. Once again, if you need this screwdriver, check out the links in the description box and the pinned comment. And because I'm such a generous person, I'm offering my YouTube audience a discount if you enter the coupon code YouTube for a discount. I do this out of the goodness of my heart because I don't want my viewers to get arthritis in their hands at the young age of 21, unscrewing many of these unnecessary screws. I was going to speed up this part of the video, but this channel is known for its thoroughness and detail. So witness as I combat each one of these screws out of the system. And now we will observe a moment of silence for all the fallen soldiers without a Fastec Pro Auto Kit. Could you imagine sitting there unscrewing each screw with a manual screwdriver like a lackey? I can't relate. 
This long black screw here holds the motherboard assembly onto the case. Now we should be able to lift up this piece here, which is the back plate, and it does have some thermal putty on it. Make sure that you don't knock this off. Now let's push down on this clip to remove this ribbon cable here. This clamp holds the APU against the heatsink, and we have to remove it by removing these two Phillips screws here. If these screws are loose or unevenly tightened, it can also cause overheating issues. Let's switch to a Phillips bit once again on our Fastec Pro Auto kit and remove this clamp. If you lose any of these screws, especially these vital ones, check out FastTechStore.com because we have complete PS5 screw sets in stock. Let's get this clamp out of the way and now let's remove this piece by simply lifting it up. Now it's time to lift out the motherboard and this is going to be tricky for a lot of you. Do not use too much force. The motherboard will feel like it's stuck in a lot of cases, but that's because of the thermal putty on the other side. Once you've got the motherboard free, you'll have access to the APU chip and the liquid metal on top of it. PS5s are known to have liquid metal related issues where the liquid metal would either spill over or oxidize as seen here. That circular spot that you see is due to oxidization. And when this happens, your system is prone to overheating as the APU chip is no longer conducting heat as it should to the heatsink. We can remedy this by using some Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot purchased from FastTechStore.com. We're gonna hook up the head that looks like a syringe and twist it on as demonstrated here. And we wanna apply a very, very small amount. Liquid metal is not like regular thermal paste. You only need a very small amount. And if you end up using too much, use the tube to pull it back in, as shown here. Make sure to not get any of this stuff on the circuit board because liquid metal, unlike thermal paste, is conductive and can cause a short. If you get any of this stuff on the motherboard, as I will later on in this video, you can use the tube to suck it back in and use isopropyl alcohol to wipe it off. And see, this should never happen. That can cause a short. Don't let that ever happen. If it does happen, suck it back up. Now we're gonna use this applicator that's included when you purchase this at fasttechstore.com and we're gonna spread the liquid metal around covering the spot that was previously oxidated and really pushing in this Q-tip looking like thing onto the surface of the APU chip till the oxidization goes away. This is what the surface of your APU should look like. As you can see here, there's no more oxidization and the entirety of the APU chip is covered in liquid metal. Once again, for people who like to skip through the video or don't pay attention, you don't want this stuff spilling on your board. We wanna do the same thing on the heatsink. Make sure there's no oxidization spot, and if there is, put some liquid metal on it and use the Q-tip looking like applicator to spread it around just as we did on the APU chip. I'm now using the Q-tip looking like thing to spread it around on the heatsink. Even though it looks like a Q-tip, it's not a Q-tip. Once again, you wanna make sure that none of this spills outside the square. Now we're gonna flip the console over. And on this side here, there's two screws that must be removed. This one here, and this one here.
let's remove this piece of tape and now we should be able to lift out the heat sink now let's flip it over and check the other side to make sure that there's no dust stuck in there if there's any dust obstructing this heat sink here your ps5 is prone to overheat this giant chunk of aluminum and copper block is what cools your apu chip air needs to pass through these fins here and if there's anything obstructing them your ps5 is going to get that ps5 is too hot overheating message and the system's going to shut off there's no dust in this heat sink, but this is how you'd be cleaning it out using the brush in our FastTech Pro Toolkit. You can also use a compressed air can, which we also sell on our website. Now that we've cleaned out the heat sink, we can move on to cleaning the power supply. At this point, you can simply lift up the power supply and it should come out. This spot here, which is a vent, tends to catch a lot of dust and you would want to clean it out and you should be able to clean out any dust that you weren't able to reach before. Now let's reinstall the power supply back in once we've cleaned it out and make sure these antenna cables on the right side don't get in the way. Now let's put the heat sink back in, make sure these ribbon cables are out of the way, you don't want to pinch those. When putting the motherboard in, the side with the ports goes in first. Now let's get this ribbon cable at the front out of the way and once again these antenna cables need to be out of the way as well. Let's push down on this clip and insert this ribbon cable all the way up until the blue line. This ribbon cable simply pushes in and so does this one on the left. Now we're going to install this piece which has two holes that it slots in and then we're going to install this clamp which secures the APU against the heatsink. It is important to tighten this diagonally and you don't want to tighten one and then tighten the other. You want to tighten one slightly and then go across and then go back and forth because uneven tightness or no tightness on this clamp can also cause overheating issues. To ensure tightness you can use a hand powered screwdriver like the FastTech Pro Toolkit. Now the back plate goes on and once again the antenna cables need to be out of the way and they need to be tucked under the tapes that are designed to hold them in place. Now let's install the connectors. You can simply line them up and push down until you hear an audible click. There's a hook where these cables tuck in and that's important because you don't want these cables getting pinched in the case. Now let's install the ribbon cable for the disk drive by pushing down on the clip and pushing the cable in. This long screw holds the motherboard and heatsink assembly onto the case. Now we need to put all of these screws back in. With the exception of this screw, I don't know how this got in here, but rest assured the perpetrator has been caught and reprimanded. Now I'm going to show you guys where each screw goes in, and I've created a diagram for your convenience. And I'd like to remind people that these videos take a lot of time to produce, so please drop a like on this video and subscribe. Here's where each screw goes. The blue circle indicates small silver T9 screws, and the white circle indicates a black long T9 screw, which I showed you earlier in the video. Now let's install the disk drive back in by putting it in position, then pushing down on the clip and then pushing the cable in. Now let's install this part of the case back on and now we must install all the different size screws on this case. This one goes in here. 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 This long one goes in the corner up top here. This small silver screw goes in here. And this long screw goes in the corner here. This screw 
goes in here. And another one right next to it here. This silver screw, these are also on the motherboard, goes here and this one goes here. This one goes in here. Please drop a like on this video because I've lost a lot of hair follicles recording, editing and producing these videos. And my editor has quit since Justin Trudeau has given him a visa. And now he doesn't want to work for the $1,200 a month I was paying him before. So please go ahead and drop a like on this video. And if you guys find another third worlder from Fiverr who will edit my videos for cheap, please let me know. Also buy the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit if you want to save some time. Now let's plug in the power cable for the disk drive. And you want to make sure this cable is tucked in like so. Now let's install the fan by putting it in its place and installing the connector. Tuck the cable in like so. Now let's install this cover on. Now it's time to install the screws in for the fan. This video I did earlier shows you where each screw goes in. Note the different lengths and sizes of these screws. You do not want to mix these up. The shortest screw goes in here. The longest one goes in here. And these two screws that are identical, they go here and here. Shout out to the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit for saving me a bunch of time. Check the links in the description box and the pinned comment if you want the screwdriver. Now the Phillips screw with a washer goes in here. This holds on the SSD if you had one installed. Now the cover for the SSD slot. And then there's this Phillips screw with the PlayStation symbols on it that goes on here. Now let's install this cover back on. This ensures that when we put the sliding door back on, our cables aren't going to get caught. Now let's install this grate. You want to install the corners in first, as demonstrated here. And then push it down. It's held in by clips. Now let's install this part of the case back on. Now let's flip the PS5 over. And we have two long torque screws that we must install. One of them goes here and the other one goes in here. We're going to tighten them with our Fastag Pro Auto Kit. Now let's install the cover back on. Same way we did on the other side. Put it in place and give it a smack. Now it's time for testing. And now I'm going to be testing this PS5, how I've always played PS5, by playing PS4 games on it. Did you guys know that most PS4 games run 4K 60 frames a second on the PlayStation 5? This game was previously struggling on this console because it was overheating, but this time around, even after hours of testing, it seems to be working good. The PS5 seemed to be holding its own even after a few restarts, different games. I stress test the system with the PS5 game and it seemed to be working good. If you have a PS5 and you don't want to do this repair yourself, check out our repair services at FastTechStore.com. We can have your PS5 up and running again in a few days and all of our parts and repair services include a lifetime warranty. Check the links in the description box and the top comment. This repair guide was brought to you by the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which not only disassembles your PlayStation 5, but your PS4, PS3, Xbox, Nintendo, and more. All replacement parts from FastTechStore.com include free worldwide shipping and a lifetime warranty. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Thanks for watching another Fast Tech video. If this content helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to check out FastTechStore.com if you need any PS5 parts or repair services. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out, and I'll see you in the next one.